something I've come to experience and learn about in little bits and pieces along the path of my rising in knowledge, which means a lot of reading, a lot of listening to lectures, a lot of taking in information from people who are more knowledgeable than me. It's been a lot of information. I've studied a lot of genres of knowledge from the esoteric to what's going on in the world, government, uh, how America worked out, uh, just so many genres of information, conspiracy theories, all this stuff. And when you do it long enough, you start learning things. You start seeing things. Patterns start to form. And the perspective and perception that you have about the world and how it works changes dramatically. And what it does is it then begins to fly in the face of the, what is it, the accepted consensus version of reality that everybody subscribes to. And when you present things to people that defy that, that consensus version of reality that everyone subscribes to, when you're presenting them the ideas that the reality that they live in is far different, that, that doesn't fit into the box that most people's minds have been placed in at a very young age and then filled in with all the shit that we've gotten from religion, from the television, from propaganda, from the government and school systems and all these other things that like to condition our minds and tell us what things are, how things are, and guide sway and direct us away from anything that resembles tapping into our true selves and becoming realized human beings. When you take in so much knowledge in an effort to try and figure out the nature of what this thing is, uh, you recognize that not too many people out there are truly doing that. Therefore, the degree of information that you will take in and, and, and learn is going to far surpass the herd. By no ill-intended thing you've done, you will take in more information than just about most people you know and essentially have the effect of separating yourself from the herd. It makes it very difficult to look at people the same way. Not because they're stupid, because you can then begin to see how they're seeing what they're seeing, why they're seeing it, because they're coming from a very limited and myopic perspective. Not that there's anything wrong with them, it's that they just don't possess the knowledge yet. And when you don't possess the knowledge, it really constricts and confines, for the most part, your perspective. The more you see, the more you know, you can't unknow, you can never go back to the way you were, your perception, you know what I mean? It's just, it, it, it's a double-edged sword in a lot of respects because there are changes that will take place in you that you could not foresee or have anticipated, but generally, um, prior to, to, to going in, prior to taking the deep dives that give you the perspective that show you there's more to this reality. Because I tell you, the human can't take too much at, at, uh, too much too fast. It's too much for the paradigm, uh, especially when you're at a lower stage or level of conscious or awareness, consciousness or awareness, you can't have your paradigm fracture too much too fast. As you dive through not learning and your awareness rises and you become more in tuned with some of the deeper things that are going on in this experience, all of a sudden, your perspectives begin to shift dramatically. And the process for me or for a lot of people is painful has been painful for me and for a lot of people will be painful because when you begin to see how much different the nature of this thing is, whether it's the way government works, the world works, the nature of this reality, what created us, the religious dogma, bullshit, law or anything, you learn too much law and you understand how the system works too much and you start talking to your friends about shit and they have no concept of it, they're going to think you're that French guy, they're going to think there's something wrong with you, they're going to think, so they're going to attach some label to you that helps them make sense of the fact that you're talking about all kinds of shit and you're serious about it that they don't understand. And in many cases, they haven't even taken the time to take in the information that would give them the awareness to have any sense or frame of reference for anything that it is that you may want to tell them. And if you should ever go down the path of wanting to do that and it becomes rejected, it has everything to do with the fact that their ego's kicking in and they don't even recognize the depths of their own ignorance. Because all of this stuff that I'm referring to so defies the paradigm we've all been given, the box of in, the box that most of us have been put in, the knowledge that's been given to us that we've been confined to for the most part. It defies all of that. And then people realize that they've got to get out of the box, which is their comfort zone. And in order to actually truly learn and evolve, you've got to get out of the box so that you're no longer influenced by the information that's contained in the box. Because if you think you can learn while still contained in the box, learning outside of the box or thinking outside of the box, you're sadly mistaken.
because you're still going to be influenced by the information contained in the box, whether it's dogmatic bullshit or shit your parents put in your head or shit somebody else put in your head. I tell you, the more you learn, the more you're going to have to adjust your perception, your interpretation of how this all works, what's truly going on, what's at the core of it all, and things of that nature. And that, that's all going to be predicated on how deep in this journey of figuring it all out you really want to go. How many rabbit holes you want to go down? How much time you've got for stuff like this? I would suggest to you that there are a lot of barriers and obstacles in the path to knowledge and truth. Barriers from the ego mind and indoctrination, and that ties together. Barriers relevant to the fragility of the human psyche, so it will reject and refuse the truth, along with the ego playing its factor in that which we think we know that was largely given to us when we were indoctrinated. <laughs> Seriously, the, the indoctrinated mind will cling to the beliefs that it was given, even in the face of truth. And what may spur its willingness to cling to its belief or beliefs with the white-knuckled death grip of sorts is the fact that the ego kicks, kicks in. And when you're faced with the fact that what you think you know and based on the fact that it was given to you from your mother or your father or your pastor or your teacher, and you're faced with, by way of your own findings or somebody else presenting to you, information that defies what you think you know, that, that affects the psyche because it puts into play the potential for your paradigm to be fractured, your system of beliefs that you've always functioned in to be challenged at the most fundamental and core level. And I think the powers that be, that have been, that believe they be for such a long time recognize the psychological barriers just that will manifest just because they understand our psychological makeup. There, there's a reason why they go after us so young. There's a reason why indoctrination is what it is. It's, it's getting you to believe, or to, to, to believe and accept things uncritically. Religion does that. Our parents do that. Uh, school does that. Um, media does that. Television does that. Uh, movies do that. All these things that are indoctrinating our minds with things that, whether we know it or not, are going into our core beliefs. And when this is happening, when we're so young, through the period of time that we're developing our perception of the world into adulthood, all of the things that are contained in there, whether we realize they're shit or not, will be clung to very, very hard. And again, I think that this is kind of a natural obstacle, psych the psychology of these things that they know about. So they work so diligently to indoctrinate our minds from such a young age because it creates a knee-jerk rejection of that which defies what the human knows or the truth if it defies what the human knows. There's anomalies there where, you know, you think you know something, you're faced with the truth. Something inside of you is resonating to that truth and you start to question what you've been given as opposed to the truth. That happened with me. Well, a lot of people will question what's or the, the truth that's being handed to them versus what's within them because something inside of them is, I don't know, shut off and the truth isn't resonating with them. And, well, I think that plays into this process that I want to explain to you about the stages of learning. If you don't have a frame of reference for it, you're not going to understand what it is. It, it parallels the concept of casting pearls amongst swine because they're just not going to know what to do with it. Um, before I go there, though, I want to continue elaborating on some of these other obstacles and barriers that I have seen and noticed to be in our way, in our in anyone's pursuit of the path, in the path of pursuing pursuing knowledge and or truth, um, a major factor that's at play is life. So, you you have a job, you have a, a spouse, you have kids, you have a dog, and you have a, the mortgage payments and the car payments and all that stuff. So you're in a process of get up, go to work, pay your bills, pay your taxes, raise your kids, have a life. It makes it very difficult to have enough time to pursue the truth, to pursue knowledge that leads you to the truth. And a lot of other people are caught up on TV and watching NASCAR and drinking beer and drugs and, you know, these things that are barriers uh, in one form or another towards our pursuit of the truth or pursuit of knowledge. Um, the powers that believe they be have also been using things like chemicals to create barriers and obstacles for us, because these things are dulling the drive, dulling the senses, and creating a level of docility and other things that prevent us from aggressively going after 
knowledge that leads to the truth or any other thing. Uh, another thing, <laughs> seriously, I've thought a lot about this, that is, or creates barriers and obstacles in the path or pursuit of knowledge that leads to truth. Just think about life. There's a lot of trauma. We're, we're psychological beings and we're relatively fragile in our psychological makeup and too much psychological, physical, emotional, sexual, whatever type of traumas that are imposed on the developing mind can create barriers where you're just caught up in the emotional, psychological, mental aspects of traumas that you dealt with and you never really get out of those cycles long enough to contemplate truth, knowledge, the reality that you live in, what you've been told, etc., etc. And there's a lot of things in this life that create traumas in the mind, the psyche, the mental, emotional makeup of the human that have them spinning their tails for the rest of their lives caught up in that shit, trying to break free of the 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 I don't know, the broken record, the snake eating its tail that being stuck in those traumas can create. That, how many people do you know of that may very well be in that condition where because they're so stuck in that and haven't let go, healed, grown, whatever, not criticizing them, I'm just saying this is, seems to be a uh, cause and effect here, that they've never gotten out of their own way in, in as much as is necessary to recognize, well, anything beyond just that little center of life that they've been dealing with. So, the path to knowledge, the path to learning, the path to truth really never comes into their their perspective, which, again, it, it comes into these stages of learning and awareness. Um, I would suggest to you that there are many well thought out and well designed and crafted and intentionally imposed obstacles um, to this path to knowledge that leads to truth, because they're all along the path, and especially the path to truth, because there's a lot of people that have a vested interest, a very deeply rooted interest in you're not knowing the truth. You're not stepping into knowledge that leads to the truth or finding it or caring about it much at all because people are so caught up in get up, go to work, pay your bills, pay your taxes, raise your kids. I got to pay these bills. I ain't got time for that shit. And if I, if I start going down those roads, I know it's going to have some kind of effect on me and everything's going to change and it could disrupt the stability of my family and my kids and my income and all of these things, these men that know, that want you to not find the truth, that want you to never step into knowledge, they, they play on all this stuff. On top of all of that, we've been, as a society, enticed by trivialities like entertainment and I don't know, stuff like that, surface level mind candy that easily grabs the attention of the lesser aware, the those that haven't quite matured out of that stuff. When you get to the point where you do, because there are those that have such an interest in preventing you or putting obstacles and barriers in the way and along your path of knowledge that leads to truth, they've created so much misinformation and disinformation to confuse the mind, to obstruct your path to the truth. <laughs> it is really, really, really sad, frustrating, depressing, angering, and a lot of things that are in the negative field of the emotional experience when you start to really see that this is going on. I guess there's something to be said for that statement. The truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. There's a lot to know about a lot of things before you even start to become set free. And in that process, you're going to get pissed if you should get pissed because you start seeing how much time, effort, money, and resources have been put into crafting your version or crafting the version of reality that you've lived under for most of your life or that most people have lived under for most of their lives. You know, people don't like their paradigm shattered. So when presenting information to them that defies what they currently know or think they know, that's a problem. When it's coming from someone that they also consider to be just as average of a Joe or Joanne as them, that becomes a problem too, because you're, you appear to be just as average as me. How or why could you be in possession of something that resembles extraordinary knowledge that, quite frankly, is defying my paradigm at the base level? And, you know, how could you possibly know? That kind of manifests itself. I guess that's an aspect of the ego that jumps in. And, you know, I, I've, I've heard it said and I've read that knowledge is all around you. You, you never know where you'll get knowledge. It could come from the mouth of a child as easy it could come as it could come from the mouth of a 80-year-old man and all points in between. It's generally our judgment of the presenter. In many respects, that seems to be an obstacle as well, this ego thing that I was saying. They're aware of the ego 
they're aware of how it will just so trip you up along this path. So this path I keep talking about, there, there's a path to truth. There is a path that requires levels of learning that beget levels of knowledge, that beget levels of awareness, that beget broadening of perspectives, that breathe life into and give rise to greater perception. Perspective, perception, they're a little different. Perception being at the root of most of our human experience. Until you go through these various levels, the information that somebody may possess at a higher level is not going to make sense to you. It's not going along the lines of casting pearl to swine. It makes totally, total sense when you get to a point where you, well, you start to get it. There must be a foundation or, yeah, there must be a foundation of knowledge that stacks on top of each layer as you rise. Think of it as a stairwell or the building of a pyramid in a layer, layered approach that is laid layer by layer on your path towards of knowledge towards truth that will hopefully bring enlightenment into your experience of this life. You have to go through periods of learning that lay the foundation. Once you take in enough information in that process of learning, you start to have the foundation of knowledge. After you have that foundation of knowledge and you've taken the time to take in the information and to embrace the learning that's in that information and turn that information into a foundation of knowledge, that in and of itself just a side effect or a direct effect is the broadening of your awareness. So that process must be followed to the, for the most part. There, there's few that can deviate or a few anomalies that I can think of where you can deviate from this process because you won't have a frame of reference for what's at the higher levels of knowledge, awareness, or truth if you haven't taken in the information that's at the lower levels that gives you a foundation from which to even understand. I think that's a fairly accepted and understood, um, I would call it truth or methodology or foundation of how you got to approach this. So there is an extraordinary amount of information to take in that does cover more genres of knowledge than most people care to take in in a lifetime. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. And until people become willing to sacrifice personal time, personal freedom and all, well, not personal freedom, but personal time and activities, et cetera, et cetera. And the trivialities that they may engage in. Watch a NASCAR and drink a beer. Um, and or make time for themselves that they wouldn't have otherwise made because their spouse or their children and other factors in their life require all their time. Factor it in so that you can begin a process. Because again, I cannot reiterate this enough. There are levels or stages of information, taking in information that beget learning, that beget knowledge, that beget awareness broadening, that beget perspective broadening, that beget, beget perception broadening in the path to, I don't know, ultimate knowledge, ultimate truth. And at each stage or each level of the process, of the pyramid, of the stairwell, you're going to find and acquire, and it's going to be different for everybody, more pieces. You're going to be collecting and gathering more pieces of the proverbial puzzle. Um, and each level will give you newer pieces and you can combine them with other. And it starts to help you to put together the picture in your head. And as that picture becomes more and more clear based off of the information you've taken in and knowledge that you have stepped into, your awareness is broadened. You begin to see the pieces that you've collected with a different eye, a different mind, a new layer of knowledge that you now possess. And those pieces begin to fit better. Pieces that you didn't have a reference for or a place for prior to that all of a sudden become, well, pieces that you can use now and fit better and clearer into the picture. And gathered over time, a picture begins to form. And clarity begins to ensue, and that clarity begets more things, like more deeper knowledge and awareness and understanding of how much everything we've been told is a lie, constructed for us, designed to steer us away from anything that resembles real knowledge and knowledge that leads to truth. I say again, there are th those that have a very deeply rooted, invested interest in your not knowing, in your not finding anything that resembles real knowledge or truth. And they have even more of an, a vested interest in ensuring that you don't care about the truth or any of these other things because you're caught up on that wheel of life, that hamster wheel of get up, go to work, pay your bills, pay your taxes, raise your kids, have some friends, do some hobbies, pay your bills, watch some TV. Drink. 
smoke lots of weed, get stoned, tune out, man, all these barriers. It's an interesting thing when you start looking at it. And again, how I'm able to do this is I just stepped back, put some paper on the wall and started writing this down and started realizing, wow, there is this flow. They're taking all of it and just putting it there and moving it around. There's this flow to how this works. There's this flow and these obvious things that are barriers and obstacles, whether they're innate within us and capitalized on or created for us that snare us and, sna and, and, and snag our attention and energy and life. So I've probably missed plenty, but I think this gives you a good enough sense of the nature of what's actually been going on. Or let me rephrase that, the nature of what it actually takes to step into knowledge that leads to truth. It's a lot. And based off of what I've told you, how many people do this? How many people are aware of this? How many people have this fundamental knowledge so that they can map out a path for their own learning that, you know, gives them knowledge that broadens their awareness and perspective and perception? I don't think many people do this. I think most people get out of high school, get married, have some kids, get that job, get that house, get those cars, get those boats, get those, those things that keep them running on the hamster wheel their entire life. Therefore, the prospect of doing anything to upset the foundation of that that they've built for themselves, even if it's the truth, it becomes something that they're not willing to consider because, well, hey, I've got this stuff and this life. And, well, anyway, so that's my perspective. That's No, that's a perspective. I think that is a piece of the proverbial puzzle uh, for anybody that's looking to or trying to understand the greater picture. Um, for anybody that finds any value or benefit or substance to what it is that I'm doing here and uh, recognizes the time that I take to put into doing these videos and they feel compelled, there is a donation button on the homepage on the top right-hand corner of my YouTube channel. So anyway, thanks for listening. Take care, everyone.